Hiya folks, welcome back to the Small Business Toolbox and welcome to the new studio. It's finally finished. I'm not going to ramble on about it. If you want to know more about the build of this studio, then head over to my Gosforth Handyman channel, link down in the description below. But I thought, what better way to get up and running to celebrate this moment in time where we have this new space to record in. What better thing to do than to have a tax return video and let's have a look at what's involved in filling in a UK tax return in 2022 stroke 2023. I'm going to be doing it based on the 2021 to 2022 tax year. So that's a tax year that ends 5th of April 2022 and I'm just going to run you through the most basic self-employed tax return ever based on just one self-employed business no other sources of income at all we're going to assume that you've made £30,000 turnover you've had £10,000 of expenses so you've made £20,000 profit as per usual please don't rely on some random bloke on the internet I am not an accountant and I am not in any way qualified to give you accountancy advice or financial advice this is just kind of my view of the world based on my experiences of running businesses for well over 25 years now the main objective of this channel is to kind of teach you the groundwork that in my view you should have been taught in school and that way hopefully you understand enough of the basics so that when you do come to run your own business and you do need an accountant you know what sort of questions you need to ask them. With all of that in mind let's head over to the computer and have a look at what tax returns look like these days. So we're going to fly through this as quickly as we possibly can because it's so boring. I have come to the URL gov.uk slash self-assessment tax returns with hyphens in between everything. I'm sure you can find it through other means on the government gateway thing on the government website. Anyway, if you come to that and then over on the right, we've got file your self-assessment tax return online and then scroll down a bit and you get the start now button. That is the bit that you need to start now. That takes us to the Government Gateway login, so you need to have already sorted a uh, sign into the Government Gateway, so make sure you've done that. So put your credentials in and then do the whole two-factor authentication access code thing, although it's been a bit temperamental recently, Monday morning here and uh, several times it came up with this. Then eventually, once you've logged in and dismissed all of the annoying cookie warnings, just scroll down and click on self-assessment. And then just double check the deadline for online returns for this one is 31st of January 2023. So make sure that you are doing the correct tax return. Then just click the complete your tax return link. Again, double check we're completing it for the correct year. This is a 2021-22 tax year, which is due January 2023. Scroll down and hit the start now button. First page, it's a tell us about you section. It's all personal details. Just make sure it's all correct and scroll down to the bottom. Obviously read through all this stuff and check it's correct, but I'm just putting no for everything. And then we're gonna tailor our return. So this is where we're gonna kind of add and remove sections from a tax return depending on your personal circumstances. I'm going to keep it really simple and we're going to kind of imagine that we've only had a self-employed business and nothing else. So were you an employee? No, I wasn't. Was turnover more than a thousand pounds? Yes, we'll say it was. How many self-employed businesses? We'll just say one. We'll just call it the usual Andy Mac drums. Uh, were you in a partnership? No. We're just going to say no to all of these to keep it simple save again tailoring this section we're going to keep it really simple no 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 obviously you make sure this is correct for yourself save and continue pensions nope charity nope this is the one bit that you're probably going to have to watch out for here do you want to transfer 10 percent of your personal allowance to your spouse or civil partner it depends on your individual tax circumstances to keep it simple i'm going to say no but this is a thing that you might want to do yes on Everything else we're keeping simple. We're getting some nice spam for a money helper website. That's brilliant. And now you can see all of the sections to the tax return here. So if you had multiple self-employments, multiple businesses, it would all be listed here. If you'd 
added them in the previous pages. If you've been employed and self-employed, then you would see that in here as well, if you added it in the previous sections. If you find that there's stuff in here that's missing, then you need to go back and add it in the previous sections. And to do that, you just go back to tailor your return on the right hand side and add the sections that you need. But as I say, I'm keeping it as simple as we can possibly have it. Just one self-employment. Oh, and by the way, if you get completely stuck and you've made a complete mess of your whole tax return, this is the bit where you would do delete your entire tax return. You click on that and then you can just start afresh. So we'll click on self-employed details here. Did you have an annual turnover of 85,000 or more? We're going to say no. Again, read through all of this stuff, but to keep it simple, I'm going to say none of these apply. Save and continue. Very brief description of the business. So for this, I'm just going to say drum teacher. Put the business postcode in if you want. Has the business name changed? No. Did the business start after 5th of April 21? No. Did your business cease trading? No save and continue date your books are made up to so this is the end of your tax year so generally that is going to be the 5th of april and because this is the 21 22 tax year it's going to be 05 04 2022 you can run your tax year over whatever you want but generally speaking life is much easier if you run it to match up with hmrc's tax year which is from the 6th of april to the following 5th of april did you use cash basis? We are going to say yes to that. But again, you might be using accruals basis for your accounts. Um, I've made a whole separate video about that, not going into it on here. It's something you need to speak to your accountant about. But for now, we're going to say yes to cash basis. Save and continue. Then income for your business. And the first figure that we need to put in, of course, is turnover. I've made a video all about turnover. If you're not sure what turnover means, then I'll include a link down in the description below. It's the total amount of money your business has made before taking off any expenses or running costs or anything like that. Do read all of the help that comes with this as well in every section so you know what's going on. Any other business income, we're just going to put zero. Trading allowance, I'm going to put zero in this because we are going to claim expenses later on. But do have a read through this and see if it's applicable for your business. But for me, I'm going to just put this as zero. And then how would you like to record your expenses? And it's much easier if you just do it as a single total figure. You can do a detailed breakdown if you want. Sometimes that can be quite handy if you want to have a kind of set of accounts at the end of it that you might pass on to, I don't know, a mortgage provider or something like that. I, I, to be honest, I don't know if that would be sufficient for a mortgage provider anyway. But if you do want your submission to HMRC to be a little bit more detailed for whatever reason, you can do the detailed breakdown there. But generally speaking, you're going to do it as a single value. And in this example, we're going to say that we've had £10,000 worth of expenses. And that is the sum total of all expenses related to your business. So all of your receipts added up, any mileage that you're claiming, if you're claiming mileage at 45 pence a mile, or however you're going to be doing mileage if you're running a vehicle through the business. The 45 pence a mile route is generally the easiest way of doing it. But again, it's something you should really talk to your accountant about. If we just click out of that box, we can see that the net profit now shows as 20,000. That's updated itself and we'll do save and continue. Right, we've got an error. Why have we got an error? It's because this is very typical for HMRC where sometimes it wants you to put a zero in the box and sometimes it wants the box left completely blank. So I'm just going to delete those out and hopefully that will fix that problem. Save and continue. There we go. Capital allowances and balancing charges. We're going to say there's no capital allowances. We've just kind of grouped everything into the expenses because we can do that on the cash basis. Once again, do read through everything that's in all the help that's provided because it's quite easy to read, to be honest. Most of this is relatively easy to understand and it gives you examples and things as well. But as I say, in this example, we're going to assume we've grouped everything into the expenses that we've already put in. So scroll down to the bottom, save and continue. Is it going to complain that we left any blank? No, it seems happy. Goods and services for your own use. Again, we're going to bypass all of that. Income support scheme, none of that. Loss brought forward from previous years. Nope, we're not doing that. Any business 
business income not already included? Nope. Save and continue. Losses for the business. Again, we haven't got any losses, so we're not going to go into that. But if you do have business losses, look into this. I would suggest you speak to your accountant. It can be very useful if you have made a loss and you can carry it forward to future profitable years. This is where you would do that sort of thing. But again, far too in depth for this. And it's definitely something you need to speak to your accountant about. Save and continue. Tax deducted from the business. This is uh, the CIS scheme, CIS scheme, um, unless you're a contractor of some description, like a, a tradesperson in the construction industry, then this is not applicable. So just ignore that, save and continue. Then we'll get a few questions about pensions and national insurance. We're just going to say no to all of those to keep it simple. Any other information? Nope. Double check everything on this looks correct. So we've got a total taxable profit of £20,000 and save and continue. Then we're on to class two national insurance. If your profits are over £6,515, you must pay class two next. Well, our profits are over that. We're going to scroll down to the bottom. It says, do you want to pay class two next voluntarily? I'm going to say no. It should charge us anyway automatically because we're above the £6,515. If your profit is lower than that, you might still want to pay the class two next so that you get a full year for pension purposes. So again, that's something you need to look into yourself. Uh, generally speaking, you do want to make sure you've got as many qualifying years as possible and it's only what is it? It's like 150 quid a year or something like that. So it's worth doing just to make sure you've got a full pension year. But for this, I'm going to say no, because it should automatically charge us class two next. We'll do save and continue. Underpaid tax included in the PAYE coding. Oh, we're just going to ignore that for now. Oh, sorry. Here, this is a one way you've got to put a zero in. Enter zero. Otherwise, it will come up with an error. And again on this one as well, underpaid tax in the PAY coding, page two of two. Read through this if it's applicable to you. I'm just going to put zero. Other debts, again, please enter zero if there's nothing. We're just going to do zero, save. Overpaid tax, this is where if you've paid too much tax, it's going to ask you where you want that tax paid back to. Again, have a read through this. I'm just going to put no on that for now. And again, no here. Just we don't want the tax code changing and stuff. But uh, again, if that's applicable to you, then uh, click yes. That's completely up to yourself. Save and continue. Do you need to make any adjustments? We're going to assume no. We'll do save. And yes, that's fine. Any other information? Nope. Save. Do you want to attach anything? Nope. Save. Double check your return. Go through everything here and just check that you've not made any mistakes. Here you can see we've done pretty much everything. All the class two NICs, everything about overpaid tax. Normally it asks for your bank details at some point. We haven't got to that bit yet. We'll do next to view the calculation. Total amount of tax due, so £2,424.88. And they're wanting a payment on account for next year as well, because we're over the threshold for payment on account. So you're going to be lumbered with a tax bill of £3,637.32. This is a bit that is worth printing out. And if you go down a little bit on here, don't print this bit out. Scroll down and go to view and print your full calculation, because you get a bit of extra information. So just click that. So here's a full breakdown here. Profit from self-employment minus your personal allowance means that you're going to have to pay tax on £7,430. You're going to be paying that at 20%, which works out at £1,486 tax. Then we've got class four national insurance here, 9% of £10,432, which is £938.88. And this is because the national insurance threshold is different to your personal allowance threshold. Again, made a video all about that before, link down in the description. So that means your tax bill is that amount plus national insurance. So your tax bill is those two numbers added together, which is your £2,424.88, then plus your payment on account as well. And then that's what brings it to the total tax due for this tax year of £3,637.32. And 32 pence. Now, interestingly, this hasn't included taking off the class two national insurance. I'm assuming that's going to be 
taken off automatically at some stage in the future after you've submitted your return it should do if you want to be on the safe side go back a couple of stages and click yes to uh, the national insurance class 2 amount but i'm pretty confident that it's going to come off at a later stage anyway because it should do you're past the threshold it should automatically just charge you that i don't know why it doesn't show it on here anyway print your full calculation that's generally the easiest way of doing it so this is the full calculation click print and then that gives you a nice printable tax calculation for your records that you can save to a pdf or you can physically print it out whatever you prefer so assuming everything is correct we'll do save and continue are you claiming to reduce your payment on account so this is where if you shouldn't be paying a payment on account then this is where you would uh, deduct it so say for example the following tax year you had shut the business down or you made no profit whatsoever so you know you're not going to have to pay any tax for the next tax year this is where you would add that in you would say yes and you have to give a bit of justification for it we're just going to keep it as no and save and then finally you can view the full copy of your tax return you just do the view pdf there definitely view it and save it off whatever you do keep this in a safe place because this is your main master record of what you have submitted to hmrc so don't lose this because if there is any problems later down the line you need to have this for reference then do save and continue read through all the information on here tick the boxes and click submit and that is your tax return done one thing we didn't get to on here was putting our bank details in which i'm not entirely sure why that's normally asked earlier on in the return let me just have a bit of a dig around and see if i can work out where that's gone it might be because we're not owed any tax unless they've changed it no i can't find it um i can only assume it's because we're not owed any tax but um while i'm here i'm gonna try changing this to uh, paying the voluntary class 2 next because we're gonna have to pay it anyway so we're just gonna do save and continue and and it's come up with an error your profits are the same or above the small profit threshold ah right okay hold on let's actually just read what it's saying here rather than just randomly clicking buttons uh okay at a glance i'm not seeing it in there let's just scroll at the top what happens if you click on this no it just takes us back down to here well i'm just gonna have to change this to no it won't let me uh, move on otherwise so uh, i think it's just because we've got to pay class 2 ni it's it's not an option because we're above the threshold i don't know why it even gives you that option There's a lot of weird things like that in uh, your tax return but yeah you kind of get used to that but yeah goodness knows where bank details have gone um, <laughs> presumably they've already got them and maybe it's something that comes up if you owed money back or maybe it's somewhere else on the hmrc system i'm not entirely sure pop in the comments below because uh, yeah i haven't claimed a refund from hmrc for a while so folks i hope you found that useful it's the first video to get back up and running in this space that we've got now to record in makes such a massive difference having a space kind of ready set up the next video is going to be about filling in a tax return if you're a company director so don't forget to hit subscribe because hopefully that'll be useful for a lot of you out there who follow this channel as i've said many times before if you are setting up in business you do need to get yourself a good accountant they are worth their weight in gold and they will generally save you more than they will cost you in the long run in the meantime if you've got any questions or anything like that fire it down in the comments below if you are an accountant and you want to help out in the comments below feel free to respond to some of the questions as well for now as per usual take care folks and we shall see you next time tatty bye